Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Welcome to the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is the first work day of the week, the day of the sun that we like to call Sunday. It's uh, pagan and males worship day. Today is also 624 of the year 2012. Well, brethren, it's time to get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, a year to search for knowledge and truth. Day 176 of the year 2012. Today's little study is reconciling yourself to the fact of sin. Reconciling yourself to the fact of sin. Brethren, I suggest you write down the chapter and verses that we give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. You can also use the pause button down here in the corner, brethren, to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. Well, with that, let's get right on over into reconciling yourself to the fact of sin. To do that, we're going to go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 53. This is your hour and the power of darkness. Now, brethren, in the Bible, uh, I'll break in here for a bit. If you, whenever you see light, you see knowledge. Whenever you see darkness, you see ignorance. Not that you're necessarily ignorant. You're, in, you're ignorant to what God is trying to teach you. Not being reconciled to the fact of sin. Not recognizing it and refusing to deal with it produces all the disasters in life. You may talk about the lofty virtues of human nature. But there is something in human nature that will mockingly laugh in the face of every principle you have. If you refuse to agree with the fact that there is wickedness and selfishness, something downright hateful and wrong in human beings, when it attacks your life instead of reconciling yourself to it, you will compromise with it and say that it is no use to battle against it. Have you taken this hour and the power of darkness into account? Or do you have a view of yourself which includes no recognition of sin whatsoever? In your human relationship and friendships, have you reconciled yourself to the fact of sin if not, just around the next corner, you will find yourself trapped and you will compromise with it. Look at your Bible. The Lord wants no compromise with sin, none whatsoever. But if you will reconcile yourself to the fact of sin, you will recognize the danger immediately and say, yes, I see what this sin would mean. The recognition of sin does not destroy the basis of friendship. It simply establishes a mutual respect for the fact that the basis of sinful life is disastrous. Always beware of any assessment of life which does not recognize the fact that there is sin. Jesus Christ never trusted human nature, yet he was never critical or suspicious because he had absolute trust in what he could do for human nature. The pure man or woman is the one who is shielded from harm, not the innocent person. The so-called innocent man or woman is never safe. Men and women have no business trying to be innocent. God demands that they be pure and virtuous. Innocence in the characteristic of a child. 
any person is deserving of blame if he is unwilling to reconcile himself to the fact of sin. Oh, blessed Lord, be the physician of my soul. Forgive its sins and heal its diseases. Lighten my heart in the knowledge of your truth and grant me grace to pass through the remainder of this day and through my whole life to your glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 we read, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath God not made the foolish the wisdom of this world? Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Have you used this day of the sun as the priest did in Ezekiel about chapter 8 in verses 15, 16, where they turned their back on the temple. In other words, they turned their back on God and went out and worshipped the rising sun. And if you read in there, you find that the Lord says this is the greatest abomination. Brethren, do you make void the word of God by changing his day from the seventh day to the first day? If you're making the void the word of God, then you're headed right for the Gehenna fire. I don't say that. Your Bible says that. That fire, oh, you don't burn forever. The Bible never says you're going to burn forever, never, never. No. It says, but you will be turned into ashes, go up in smoke, and be remembered no more. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation, with the Father and the Son, get down on your knees and repent from following the tradition of men. Make the changes in your life. Decide to follow the Lord in all His ways, all His Sabbaths and holy days, not the traditional holidays of men, but the Lord's holy days. You find Leviticus 23. And brethren, while you're on your knees and asking for the Father and His Son to bring the Spirit within you to drive away all doubt, strengthen your faith, also ask Him for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the love letter He has given to you. And that love letter is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Email me at 473 at cox.net or check into my webpage at wwwfcg 82 dot com backslash h2 dot htm thank you